thought I would do another recent vinyl spins for you this week. Uh, this week I don't have a whole lot to show because I haven't had uh, that much time to spin some records. But uh, there was one thing that I got in the mail that I was very happy about because it was just released. And I've been looking forward, it, forward to it for the longest time. Uh, again, this is something that Music Matters will not release, but thankfully Blue Note did. And the album in question is Art Blakey's Night at Birdland Volume 1. So uh, I think they plan to release the second part later this year, which I'm also very happy about. Um, this uh, concert at Birdland originally was released on uh, two 10 inch uh, LPs. And, you know, when the 12 inch became more into vogue, what Blue Note did was they released it as a 12 inch, but if you could find the 10 inch, um, it's a gold mine. Those 10 inches have the original Lexington label. And you know, I tried bidding on one, and everyone I've ever seen, even if they're like good or fair, they go for like uh, well over a hundred dollars. Uh, but this was released by Capital. And uh, Blue Note does a fairly good job with these. These are all digitally sourced. So my understanding, talking to various folks, is Blue Note is in the process of digitizing all their masters. Um, they are doing 32-bit, um, 356K, I want to say. Um, digital masters and Alan Yoshida who did a wonderful job doing a lot of the digital masters for Blue Note under the XRCD campaign in Japan is doing a wonderful job and I think the lacquers on these guys are being done by Bernie Grunman so you can't go wrong it's not as good as a Music Matters release but nevertheless I am satisfied and I think I got it for the whopping price of $16 including shipping, so I'm not going to complain about that. This is just a stellar release. And just to show you what the 10-inch cover looked like, I do have two of the CD releases here. So there was some additional material, and in Japan they did a third volume, and I think these two CDs actually capture everything that was on the Japanese third volume. But i got to tell you an interesting story now. Um, at Birdland, there was a Master of Ceremonies, which was also the doorman, and he did all the intros. And this is Pee Wee Marquette here. Now, Pee Wee Marquette is a fascinating figure uh, because he demanded a tip. So, if you didn't tip him, he wouldn't say your name correct when he did the band intros. And a lot of people at the time were saying that, you know, he was demanding pretty high tip. And, you know, it was the equivalent of, well, people were tipping him like five bucks, which is a lot in 1954, 56 money. And, like, reading through Horace Silver's autobiography, really funny. He, chose not to tip Pee Wee Marquette. And Pee Wee entered him as Horhas Sliber. <laughs> so there's a lot of different jazz biographies that make reference to Pee Wee Marquette. And I mean, even if you do a little bit of digging online, there's some fascinating stories about him. But one of the things that um, I found out reading Horace Silver's biography was... Um, Pee Wee Marquette had a penchant for large black women. And so, you know, being a little person, um, he would have to pay for such services. And uh, one of a fellow band member actually lived next door to him in an apartment in New York. And they could hear through the walls, which were paper thin. And a very funny story, which Horace Silver tells in his autobiography, they could hear a very large black woman grabbing him, picking him up, and they hear him, Bitch, I will pay you your money, just let me down. So, that's Pee Wee Marquette. Um, very interesting figure, so, uh, you know, 
Art Blakey. He had a couple of live albums done at Birdland and Pee Wee Marquette did the, the intros. So uh, just thought I'd share that little golden nugget of information with you. Um, I do have one more jazz album to show and then two more which are not jazz. But uh, So next uh, I was spinning Tina Brooks. This is Back to the Tracks. Uh, this is a Music Matters release. And this is really good. So, uh, Tina Brooks, in his lifetime, uh, there was one, only one album that was released uh, by him as a band leader, which is True Blue, which is a, a, a classic. Uh, but he was a heroin addict, and um, all of his drug use eventually took his toll, took the toll on his body, and he died at the age of 42, I think. But Blue Note retained the recordings, and Michael Cuscuna in the 80s uh, um, managed to find a bunch of stuff that was just never released. And so this is one of uh, three albums uh, that was released after his death. And, I mean, just look at the lineup here. I mean, you got Art Taylor, Paul Chambers, Kenny Drew and Blue Mitchell so this just swings I mean this is a, a good hard bop album it has one slow song which is for heaven's sake um, and what I find kinda odd is uh, Jackie McLean is also on here uh, but is not featured on the cover which was a mess by the Music Matters team uh, but you can see a photo with uh, Tina Brooks uh, with Jackie there. Uh, so, Tina was not his original name, that's a nickname. Uh, his original name is Harold Floyd, but uh, again, this is just stellar. Uh, this is a 45 RPM release. Uh, they have not done a 33 and a third release. Uh, but just to show you the labels. So, uh, a reflecting of the time that it was recorded, uh, the, the Blue Note office was, was at the 47 West 63rd office. And the pressings are all done at RTI and they come in these nice uh, frosted inners. And I almost prefer these over um, the MoFi sleeves. I think they're a little more rigid. Um, I've never had a problem with them at all. Dr. Deadwax somehow got a hold of the supplier and he buys these. I just love to know where he gets them because I uh, I prefer these over the MoFi sleeves to be quite honest because they're a little more rigid than the MoFi sleeves. So moving off of jazz, this was a record store day release in Europe, and this is Huberphonics' second album, uh, Blue Wonder Power Milk. And uh, if you're not familiar with Huberphonic, uh, they're really hard to classify so they're all over the place musically so initially when they started you know folks categorized them as trip hop which you know I don't like that classification I don't think they did either and I think the reason why they got that classification was they were actually doing a lot of touring with Morchiba and Massive Attack for their first album the second album features a brand new singer which is uh, Geika Ar Arnert and uh, she they're from Belgium, so she's uh, Belgian, and this is really quite wonderful. I mean, it's poppy at times, there's strings, there's samples. Um, a couple of the tracks on here were actually used uh, in American commercials, uh, probably in the early 2000s, Motorola and Volkswagen. Probably the best known track off of this is Eden. Uh, which is funny because uh, Sarah Brightman, who chose not to go into space as a tourist because she didn't want to harm the hair on her head, um, actually covered uh, Hoover Phonics Eden. Uh, but uh, this is a music on vinyl release, uh, limited to, I don't know how many pressings, but they did foil stamp it. And it comes on this... Very nice translucent blue vinyl. And 
I want to say this is the first time it's been released on vinyl, although I'm not 100% on that, but it sounds fantastic, and it came with this really nice uh, insert here. So the last thing I have to show, uh, just a shout out to Mr. Rob Paniques because I saw it on the shelf and I was extremely jealous. So I went to, um, it's not really my local record shop, but it's probably the best record shop in Houston, which is Cactus Records, uh, which is probably about a 40 minute drive for me. But what I like about Cactus is uh, record store day, uh, for the past few years, they've said, we never get everything on the day of. And they said, usually afterwards, everything that we ordered shows up. So, you know, I called them. And I was hoping I might be able to get the white stripes, but they yeah, had no chance in that. And I said, well, come back, hit us up. We might get something in. So I went back down, and uh, sure enough, they had like six boxes full of record store day releases. Um, a lot of them, yeah, I knew of, but I'm like, man, I care less. But uh, seeing this on uh, Rob's shelves, I was just extremely jealous. So it is the Bee Gees Extended Mixes. So four tracks from the Saturday Night Fever uh, soundtrack, which I was just playing with my daughter the other night. Um, so this was a promotional-only release back in the day for DJs. Uh, and it has like Staying Alive, uh, Night Fever, More Than a Woman, and You Should Be Dancing. So the best known tracks off the soundtrack for Saturday Night Fever. Um, for me, this is probably the only Bee Gees I've ever owned. I'm not a super big Bee Gees fan. I got a bootleg CD of theirs, but you know, I, they're not a group I, I can see, but you know, I am familiar with the, the singles and yeah they're kind of fun from time to time to fall off the shelf and I had some fun with my daughter but anyways uh, thanks Rob for putting that on your shelf but not talking about it uh, anyways I hope everyone is doing well um, I was happy to see that uh, Bobby Z made a video so I gotta say come back Bobby Z please make more videos um, I know there's a lot of negativity but hey don't let it get to you uh, Brandon Mr. Hall of Fame you know, he's taking a time out. I'm like, come on, dude, come back, make videos. Ignore the trolls, screw them. I mean, who cares? I mean, there are people that like you and want you to make more videos, so please do. I mean, don't let the negativity. You can just ignore that. Make videos. So, Dr. Deadwax, if you're watching, hope you're doing well. Um, and uh, John K. Techhead, Kieran, uh, Kirsten, uh, all you guys, Chris um, in Switzerland. I hope you guys are all doing good, and to anyone else I forgot, you know, I hope you have a great week, and thanks for watching.